Well, this one is like the one that was in your um, thing. It's testing on the difference between legislative and non-legislative rules. So again, which issue are we addressing? We're addressing what? What, what did the agency do that we're addressing? They do. They, they cited me, right? Assuming I'm evil ringmaster zealous. Right? They cited me. Informal adjudication. They've cited me. So I'm fighting that, right? Okay. And what does the citation... If we look up further... She was told she would, okay, fair enough. She would have to be or she would be fined for non-compliance. Okay, so we'll work our way back up. Drafted policy statement in its employee manual that instructed inspectors to cite ringmasters who fail to compensate carnies for work in excess of their normal full-time duties, including anyone who works for a human cannonballs more than, twi more than twice daily. All right, so now first question, can that be a policy statement? It says it's a policy statement, so it's a policy statement, right? Mm -hmm. no. no, we need to check. All right, what's the issue on policy statements? Present effect, not pre no present effect, and it allows freedom to change their mind, right? This doesn't fit with that. This says side of now. Okay, so it can't be a legitimate policy statement. What about a valid interpretive rule? Could it be a valid interpretive rule? Essentially, can um, Zellum be fined independently? We have to look at the act. We have an existing agency regulation defines full-time work for human cannonballs as being shot. Is that shoot? Should we shot twice a day. Then we have the policy statement that says human cannonballs cannot be shot more than twice daily. We have the ability without the policy, the alleged policy statement, to go ahead and cite Zellum. Is there something that already exists? Yeah, legitimate regulation, right? It's, it's regulation that's been issued appropriately. So the, the amendment would be E is the correct answer, a legitimate non-legislative interpretive rule because there's adequate basis in the law to enforce the rule against Zellum. It does not have independent effect and does not, does not amend the prior legislative rule. That's our test for an interpretive rule. Everybody see that? Does it make sense? Okay. All right, question nine. Okay. Now, does anybody need to go? We'll keep going. All right, let's go for a little bit longer. I'm getting burnt, and I'm sure you all are getting burnt, too, particularly after having taken an exam all day. I'll give you the answers on the ones we don't finish. The last one was E, right? Did you have a really large class? If that wouldn't have been a class. I may have had them do more. Usually, I, I started, the first time I did this, I started with three questions, and it killed me because of how much I have to edit them. So I have gone down. It's better. You guys learn more if I make you do more, but it, it's, it's, it's hard for me. So I think I made them do two last year. Okay, question nine, RISIC. some of the students in last year's class. Okay, and again, this would not be the type of question I would use because it has the, uh, which of the following is incorrect. I really don't, I, to me those are just way too tricky and unfair. My questions are hard enough already. Um, but maybe we'll learn something. In fact, let me go ahead and give you the answer on this one because I'm getting tired of due process. 
hold on. Yep, C is correct. Wait a minute. Um, radiance. To allege liberty, interest, mis risk, and question only the school's damage is good name and reputation, not that such damage will negatively affect them in the future. That's not right. That's what they, uh, that's what I have up here, but that's not right. We'll see if they. D is the correct answer. You have to show, remember stigma plus? So you don't have to show future Yes, you do have to show future so harm. Oh, oh, well that. <laughs> That's why I don't like those questions. So, um, C is not correct. C is correct. C is a correct statement, right? Is what I'm C trying is to say. the answer, is that right? C is yeah. the answer. Others are incorrect. C is wrong. Thank you. Yes, that's what I'm trying to say. But let's just like give that one the other crosser. That's why I won't get those. What is the answer? It's C. See, because the because the answer is wrong, it's, it's and it says incorrect. But now you see why I don't like to give those because they confuse me when I take them. All right, question ten. Did I keep? Do I? Do any of you guys have the, the bad questions on there? 15 is a bad question. I don't know if I have that on here. How, how high do years go? Oh, 16. 16. No, that's a different 15. All right, to 16. All right, we're on 10. 10 is what? Let me look. <laughs> Endorses eating tasty animals. Tasty. <laughs> Which one's chocolate milk? That's correct. Logical outgrowth test. Now, none of these say that, though, do they? Oh, my goodness. What am I going to do? <laughs> yes. C is correct. So, again, remember that if you remember chocolate milk, remember I gave you chocolate milk, you should remember chocolate milk. The idea is that the notice is supposed to put regulated entities on notice or make them aware that their particular industry could be affected. It doesn't have to be identical to the ultimate rule, and our test is really whether the regulated entities would have had notice that their particular industry was going to be affected. And the fact that other industries, for example, had written in and been aware of it is some suggestion that perhaps this particular industry ought to have been aware as well. So. Be aware of that test. All right, that takes us to 11, the ostrich farmers. Yeah, this one should be pretty easy. What's the answer? I said D. There is agency action, right? There is a denial. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that E is definitely not right. B. All right, B is wrong because 
And the fact that a decision is delayed doesn't mean that it's not going to be valid. Those are different issues. Um, and usually we only care if it's delayed if there's no ultimate decision ever reached. We don't care if there's a delay if there's an ultimate decision. So B is wrong. Uh, let's see. D, I don't know where our even comes in. Do we have it? I thought it was their regulation. A is the correct answer. Ah, let me tell you why that was hard for you all. Because you don't like to pick A, right? No. And in fact, every question that I got, the correct answer was B or C on yours. I will tell you that I very clearly make sure I don't know what the answer is before and what the answer is after. So you don't remember the old trick of, oh, I got three Ds in a row. One of them's got to be wrong. Yeah, you guys like that. I think I just that was four in a month. You did, and I put them all there because I'm not going to jinx me. So don't. I mean, read all of them. Read all of them, okay? I'm including A and including E, and just because you get three Ds in a row or five Ds in a row, I make sure I don't know which one I've done. There's always a tendency to pick B or C, as you all pointed out, but I know that rule, so I go around that one. All right. So the correct answer was A on that one. Well, we can get through them all. We we rush here. Oh, I hate this question. Can I just give you the answer? Yeah. Yeah. Just give us the answer to the rest of them. D. You want just the answer, sir? I'll be happy to give you the rest. All right, 12 is D. I heard somebody say that, right? Is it D or E? D. Okay. It just, that one, the statute simply requires formal rulemaking. That's different than hybrid rulemaking. All right, question 13. B. B is correct, yep. That was 13. Question 14. D. As in D is correct. Oh, huh? Not really. Oh, I got two. You're doing well. All right. 15. What do you got? I got E. No. Wow. <laughs> D. And here, D, because the FDA's actions fall within the exception to notice the comment rulemaking. I'm not sure what, what it is. Oh, I'm. It, oh, it may have been one of those um, good cause exception ones they were trying to get at, just looking at it quickly. I have not reread these. I Just the ones that were on that I used last year, I'm aware of which ones those were, but other than that, I haven't read them. All right, question 16. The correct answer is A. Oh, yeah, that's the issue of uh, agency's interpretation of the magic language for members entitled to Chevron deference. All right, so um, let me give you a couple of procedural things. Uh, those of you who didn't have me for BA or those of you who had me have forgotten this. I do not like abbreviations unless I tell you you may use them. So do not use A and C for arbitrary and capricious, for example. Um, and the reason for that is that you may think that your abbreviations are perfectly clear but they're not. So unless I tell you that you can specifically use one, for example, if I gave you the name of an association suing, I'll give you an, an acronym in, um, in quotes. Same thing if you get Department of Labor, um, I'll give you DOL or something. But for the most part, err on the side of not using abbreviations. It irritates me when I'm trying to read and trying to remember or trying to figure out what it is you're trying to say. Um, what else? Yes, you need to cite. You don't have to cite every little thing, but I do expect major things to be cited, the APA, for example. Um, for the due process clause, you pretty much can just say the due process clause. If you're citing a case, just one, the first name of the case is all I need. I don't need it cited more than that. But because it's open book, I would expect you to be able to prove what you're saying to me. Your citation is your proof that what you're saying is accurate. And don't wing it. I do check the citations, and I have had wrong citations, and I will actually get madder if I get a wrong citation than no citation at all um, if I catch it. So you really, the one goal here is dude, don't, don't make me mad. I hate grading. I, I know you hate taking exams. I hate grading them. Uh, so what you want is you want me to read it, get through it, and just say, isn't that lovely? That person obviously came to class, paid attention, understood what I had to say. I'm so happy, as opposed to, were they there? Did they listen? Or are they just checking Facebook the entire class? Right? So you want me to be happy and know that I've heard you. Or excuse me, you've heard me. So right, no me mess. We're not going to use that on the essay. 
Are we not supposed to use the flunk chart test too? Yes, you're not supposed to use the flunk chart, use the actual language. Pretend I'm a judge. You wouldn't say mead mass to a judge, you wouldn't say flunk test to a judge. You think about it, you think about it analyzing it, right? And remember, to me, the most important thing is getting to your proof. Now, if you have an issue like a, a reviewability question, how many different topics do we talk about in reviewability? Six, maybe? I don't know if I have that right. Chances are I'm not testing on all six, but chances are I'm testing on more than one, okay? So don't give me everything just to throw it in there. Use your um, expertise and identify what the topics really are. Show me that you know how to think like a lawyer. You will have an hour. You will have 30 multiple choice questions. I, I, I think these are relatively representative of the level of difficulty of these questions. I think they're slightly easier than the BA ones were. I think. I, I mean, that's my take on it, but it may be because this is my area that I know inside and out. So I don't know if I'm being fair on that, but based on the student questions, did these seem a little easier than what you guys had for BA? I know you guys have it. And I think these are pretty fair, and this is really how I test. I have the, the answer or the test built into the answer of the question. So just make sure you sort of know what your tests are. What else? Um, I will post the directions Thursday night. So that you have those and we'll have been able to read those in advance and know how many questions there are, all of that. You will be time pressured. This is my way of testing the people who have stayed up through the semester as opposed to those of you who try to cram at the end. Um, what other mean and devious things do I do? How long is the entire exam? Three hours, I believe. Oh, okay. Yeah. Last year they had four hours, but it's because I, I let them take it off site and bring it back because I am not a big fan of reading handwritten ones. If you're handwriting, and we talked about making Jello mad, <laughs> please make your handwriting clear. If I can't understand it, I don't give you credit for it. So, um, anything else? So, the, you, we have two essays? I said I don't know oh, yet. That's okay. Can you try to post that flow chart that you had up on the board that one day? I can post the one, but do you remember I talked about Mr. Ingram's, and I've never actually gotten around to do it. Let's let's do it here because I I think it's I think it's oh well. That was an orange one. I guess I should put it YouTube to see who it is. Yeah. All right, so theoretically, hello. I erased it, now I'm not going to be able to write anything after all that. Anybody see? Will not jump. Can you run next door and see if there's one in the class there? I promise I won't chat before you come back. If, um, if you don't want us to say, like, do this or name the factors, like, you want us to list the cases that are common when we're trying to test or just list the elements of the test? I want the elements of the test. So can we say, like, the track? Yeah, track is the name of it. Mead Mess is something that a law review person came up with as a trendy law review article title. Track factors, uh, they're used in the case, they're called the track factors because of the case name is T period R period, you know, whatever track stands for. So track factors is a legitimate one. Same thing with logical outgrowth. That's the name of the test, so that's legitimate. The mean mess is just something that a law professor came up with to write a great law review article. All right, so what, what Mr. Ingram is, this is the Ingram rule. I don't want to say Ingram rule on your test either, but this is the Ingram rule, right? Um, and you're going to have to bear with me because I'm going to have to think through it as I'm doing it because I haven't thought about it in a couple days. Um, Mr. Ingram, are you going to help me out here? No. So for questions of law on anything, except for interpretation of regulations. The first step is what? Brown and Williamson. What's that? Brown and Williamson. Brown and Williamson, yes. Um, did Congress delegate, right? Now, that's Brown and Williams. In stat law, that would probably be a question on your exam. Potentially. An admin, Congress is always going to delegate. So, but you start to sort of think through that process in your head. Did Congress delegate? Step two, assuming Congress delegated, then the next thing is how, what, 
uh, how did the agency act, right? Right, what, um, so did the agency act with force of law, right? So, it acts with the force of law with what three areas? Formal rulemaking. Formal adjudication. And formal rulemaking, right? Okay. So it, if it acted with the force of law, what's the test that applies? Chevron. Chevron. By the way, this is no deference. All right. So if it didn't act with the force of law, then we're going to apply the Barnhart factors. B A R Hart factors. Remember the institutional. This is basically is it the type of issue that Congress would have intended the agency to have control over? In other words, how complex is it? How much is the agency expertise? needed, what are the gaps, all those factors. Okay, if Barnhart factors show Congress meant to delegate to the agency
can't decide, based on that, come up with a system. My system is I always pick the second choice. You could always pick the first choice. You could always pick A if it's available or whatever, but come up with a system to always pick the same one. Why? So you don't have to think about it. That will take, you only have a very short period of time. Come up with a system. Circle that number on your exam booklet. Fill in your answer on your exam scantron because don't do what I did for the LSAT and mess it up and have to go back and erase. It's a bad thing. All right. Then go back and reread. Once you're finished and gone through it once, go back if you have time and reread those ones that you had questions on. Half of them will become clear because you'll read them more slowly and you'll see that, that language that you missed, like we saw today, right? The other half, a later question, may have been written slightly differently, but asked the same thing, so you'll understand what the first one was asking. So half of the ones you were confused on are going to go away. The rest, oh well. Nobody gets 100 on multiple choice, very rarely. So don't expect it. Let them go. Do not go back and recheck the answers you've already answered. It will change them to wrong answers. Keep it at an hour. Managing your time is part of what I'm testing on. Okay? I really, really, really want you to do well. I really just want to be thrilled and happy when I see the exams. And I know you don't like taking them. I don't like writing them. I don't like grading them. I don't like any of that part. But I've had a lot of fun this semester. You guys have been a great class. So I will see you Friday morning. And I'm sure we'll be in touch between now and then. Do you